Chapter 1. The Most Important Choice in Life Today we are heading for a place too wonderful to believe. Rejoice and dance, children of the Lord, for we are not citizens of this doomed world. We are not riding Satan's locomotive streaking toward hell. No way. The only destination for the Jesus train is heaven, and that station is coming up fast. The Lord spoke about His heaven in 53 books of the Bible. It isn't just some figure of speech or some poet's concept. Heaven is a literal address for God and His angels. Heaven is an awesome and indescribable place that is so utterly glorious that even God can't fully describe it due to the limitations of our human language. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 In heaven we will never be idle, and we sure won't be bored. Never again will we know pain, sickness, aging, struggle, boredom, or fear. Moreover, it's interesting and wonderful that over the past few years, we've been suddenly hearing of hundreds of people who died, went to heaven, but then returned to life. These people testify of what they saw in heaven before they were sent back. They talk about crystal clear air and the awesome magnitude of heaven, and its never before seen lights and colors, its music, and the mind-boggling view of God's universe as they saw it from heaven. They tell that the stars, the moon, and the galaxies took their breath away. Each person said they had a glorious sense of being home at last. Their joy almost exploded upon reuniting with friends and loved ones who were there. New flowers bloomed everywhere with countless new colors. Walking down those heavenly streets of gold and seeing the mansions in our Father's house awed them. The presence of our Heavenly Father and Jesus gave a fragrance to everything everywhere. Heaven has no need for locks, policemen, lawyers, doctors, or hospitals. Big lions and tiny little animals frolic together. And no one who has come back from heaven ever saw any blind, crippled, or aged. God promises, Behold, I make all things new. Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 Testimonies abound from those who talked with Jesus, and they tell how God's glory lights up all of heaven and music fills it. Look out below! Heaven is coming up fast, and that's the best of news. However, there is also a wealth of scripture, confirmed by many unsaved people who have returned from the dead, which tells about hell. The Lord declares that hell is as real and as eternal as heaven. It is a deep, deep pit of utter darkness, and inhabited by tormenting spirits, crushing loneliness and despair. The souls there are tortured by the realization that they are forever cut off from God, and they vividly remember how they could have avoided hell, a place where one can't even die, by receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Many of the witnesses to the horrors of hell gave their hearts to Jesus immediately upon their return to this life. Today we ride in a world with six billion other souls, a world that is streaking toward the finish line of time itself. The Lord has given us a powerful list of prophetic truth to ensure that we can read the great clock of heaven that tells us the nearness of Jesus' return. He longs for every lost soul to embrace His cross and to enter His kingdom before that clock strikes midnight. But how much time is left? Not much. Most Bible scholars agree that we are swiftly approaching the time when Jesus will return to earth no longer the suffering of servant of Isaiah 53, but the triumphant King of Kings whom John saw during his revelation. At that moment, the war of all wars will end. The great clock of heaven will begin a thousand-year countdown, and life on earth will change drastically. We will experience an intensity and quality of love not known since Adam and Eve walked and talked with God in the cool of the day because there will be no more Satan on the earth. He and his evil horde of demons will be bound for a thousand years, and Jesus will rule 
from David's throne in Jerusalem as God promised. See Luke chapter 1 verse 32. But mark this down. After the millennium is over, the billions who have rejected salvation through Jesus Christ will experience a cataclysmic crossroads from which there will be no turning back. They will descend into a pit of thick darkness out of which they can never return. There will be no friends to keep them company ever again. They will be shattered as they recall their rejection of Jesus' salvation and how they foolishly thought hell was only a curse word. But worst of all, those who descend into hell cannot even die. What should we then do? Don't let the sun set today without saying yes to Jesus. Receive your passport to heaven direct from his nail-scarred hands and then go out to compel as many as you can to go with you. This most important life choice, heaven or hell, propels the ministry of high adventure to labor and all-out intensity. Only eternity will show the contributions being made at this fleeting eternal moment. God has declared that even the islands of those seas will come to know Jesus before the end of time. Our radio arm, the Voice of Hope, broadcasts the good news of Christ's salvation to the nations into every single continent and island and to the 200,000 ships at sea. We must send forth God's word like golden rain and harvest every lost soul. Everyone who has helped High Adventure has helped to create one of the great miracles for the final harvest. Its impact is staggering, but we should expect nothing less as we obey God in this great commission. We live by Jesus' powerful admonition. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. John chapter 9 verse 4